there, my name is Kelly Dell with Off the Beaded Path. Today, we are gonna learn a classic stitch called the Russian Spiral Stitch. Now, I do mine a little bit differently than some other people, especially in the beginning, so I think you'll find it a new way to do the Russian Spiral. This is a great project because it uses up a good bit of your extra beads. So let's go ahead and see what you're gonna need so we can get started. So these are the bracelets that I wanna show you how to make today. You can see you can do a lot of fun things with it. This is two colors, one color of 11 and one size eight. This one is actually four colors. I have one color of my size 11 seed bead and then I have three colors of my size eight seed beads that make this fun spiral for the 4th of July holiday for here in the States. Um, you see I've made bracelets out of these and out of this one I actually made a necklace or you can make it into a wrap bracelet and again I have done one color of 11 and three colors actually of my size 8 seed beads. So today like I said you are going to need 11s and 8s. So the 11s that I'm gonna be using today are this uh, metallic bronze Mayuki seed bead. And you are going to use about, depending on what you make, you are probably gonna use about six grams of that. The um, color A, I'm gonna call these A, B, and C. So my color A that I'm gonna use here is going to be um, this 80 matte transparent chartreuse AB, and this is a Mayuki. Um, you're only gonna need about two to three grams of that. My B that I'm gonna use, um, or what I'm gonna call B, is an opaque turquoise Mayuki, and again, only about two to three grams. And then the C that I'm gonna use is gonna be a matte cream. And again, only about two to three grams. So it's good about using up some extra size eight seed beads that you have. You're gonna need a button. Today I'm gonna be using the Monstera button from Tierra Cast. And you are going to need some leather. I'm gonna use about 28 inches of leather here so that you can see there's 12, 24, and about 28 and a half inches there. You are also going to need some fire line. I'm gonna be using an eight pound fire line. You can also use a six pound if you have it. Um, I've got my scissors to cut my thread and you can either use a size 10 or a size 12 beading needle. That is completely up to you. Now, before I get started, I did wanna let you know the bead board that I'm using today is by the Bead Wrangler. And this little tray is called the No More Oops Bead Tray from lakesidejewelry.etsy.com. And in the comment section, if you put Kelly Tray, she sends you a fun free gift um, with that purchase. So that will get us started today. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my leather here and I'm gonna fold it in half. And I'm gonna take my button and I'm going to thread the button onto one end of the cording. Now I'm gonna pull that button all the way down to the center of the leather and then I'm going to make a knot right here under the leather. So I'm going to do a pretty good size one here. And then you can see, I'm just gonna pull that knot up close to the button. Just like we did last week in the Java bangles, we're doing it the same way. We're gonna put it on leather so it's a little bit easier to, um, I like to put it on leather so it's easier to put on and take off. And I'm gonna pull each little side here so that now I have my button ready. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I have my needle threaded with two yards of thread. You can use whatever is comfortable for you, but for me, it's gonna be that two yards. So I, like I said, I start mine out a little bit differently. So I'm gonna be using my size 11 seed bead and I'm gonna thread on 10 beads. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. All right, so I start with 10. I'm gonna bring these down and I'm gonna leave just a couple inch tail here, not long at all, just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take my needle and I'm gonna go back through all 10 beads again. So from the little short end here, I'm gonna go back through all 10 
and I'm gonna pull it. And when you pull it, a lot of people pull their thread like this. Because I always say pull it to make a circle. And a lot of people pull it like this. Well, if you do it like that, it's not gonna make a circle. You have to pull both threads the way they're coming out of the beads. So if you pull the threads like this, it will pull them out and make that little circle that you want. So my working thread is here and my tail thread is here. So I'm gonna continue on through the first bead that I added, which is gonna be the one that my little short tail thread is coming out of. So I'm just going through one more bead and I'm going to pull that thread. Now, I'm gonna take the two ends of my leather here and I'm going to thread my little ring over the two pieces of leather. Now, making sure those leather pieces are even, I'm gonna take a little small piece of painter's tape here. I like painter's tape because none of the sticky residue will come off onto your leather. And I'm just going to kind of wrap the leather a little bit with the painter's tape. This will stop any of my threads from getting caught in between. So that is why I like to put that little piece of painter's tape on there. So we are gonna do the piece on the leather just like we did last week. So you can see my thread is coming out of this bead here, right here, and it's coming out to the right. So I am going to have my beads A, B, and C, all right? So this is just an 11-0. The green is gonna be my A, the turquoise is gonna be my B, and the white is going to be my C in this pattern that I'm doing. So I'm gonna pick up two 11s and one A, all right? I'm gonna skip three beads. So I'm coming out of one, I'm gonna skip three. One, two, three, and I'm gonna go through this fourth bead here. So again, I am coming out of one bead, I'm going to skip three, and then I'm going through the fourth bead here. And I'm going to pull this, and when I do, I want the new beads to sit on top. So just this first round, you might have to push them up. All right, this time I'm gonna pick up two 11s and what I'm gonna call a B. All right, same thing. I'm coming out of this 11 right here. I'm gonna skip three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna go through that fourth 11 So again, I'm gonna skip three, one, two, three, and I'm gonna go through the fourth 11 Now, when I pull this one, you'll notice now that when I turn it around here, if I pick up two 11s and a C, I only have two beads here that I can skip. I don't have three beads. This is where we have to do our quote step up. Um, and the great thing is, it's the only time we have to do a step up in the whole piece. So I'm gonna pick up two 11s and a C. This time, I'm gonna take these beads and I'm going to basically skip one, two, three, four 11s. So one, two, three, four 11s, and, or three 11s, and I'm gonna go through the 11 right before the A. Remember, the green was my A, so I'm skipping the beads, I'm doing my step up, and I'm going through that 11 right before the A. And I'm gonna pull this through. Okay. Now, from this point on, it's a super easy pattern to follow. We pick up two 11s and an A, and I go through the 11 O before the B. So it's always A, B, C, A, B, C. So two 11s and an A, I go through the 11 O before the B. Okay, so before the B. And I pull it tight. Then I just turn my work here. I pick up two 11s and a B. And I go through the 11 before the C. All right, so I'm basically skipping all of these beads here to come through the 11 before the C. Okay. 
Now I pick up two 11s and a C. And I'm basically gonna skip my beads to come through the 11 O before the A. Okay. So when I pull this through, now you can see where I've got a spiral started here. Okay. So again, we've got A, B, C. So I pick up two 11s and an A. I'm coming out of this 11 here, so I'm gonna come through the 11 over before the B. I've got an A on, I go through the 11 over before the B. Two 11s and a B. I basically am gonna skip the beads to come through the 11 over before the C. The only thing I hate about using this smoke fire line is if it comes off on your fingers. I know they make black satin, but it's just what I had here at my bead table. All right, and one more time, I've got two 11s and a C, and I skip the beads here to come through the 11 O before the A. And you can see each time when I pull, I'm kind of taking my thumb and pushing the beads back like this, so that way it keeps it nice and tight as I work. So you can really see now that spiral that you've got going. Now, right now that spiral is a little, it looks tight and it'll stay tight, but I'm gonna stitch some more because I wanna show you, I like a really, really nice tight spiral like this one here. And there's a trick to getting this nice tight spiral. So I'm going to continue to stitch on this for a little while so I can show you how to get that nice tight spiral. Okay, so you can see here that I've got a little bit more done on my project. And the spiral itself is an open stitch. It's very open and airy. But like I said, I like mine to be a much tighter spiral. So as I work, I actually take and I kind of push the leather itself and twist it. So you can see that when you do that, it really kind of pushes everything down. Um, it makes it look more together and I just like the look of this. Now, if you don't like the look of this, that's completely fine. You can leave it real open and airy, and this is what it's gonna look like if you leave it and don't actually kind of push the spiral down. That's why I like to do this kind of on the leather because it's gonna stay like this. It's gonna keep that nice tight spiral that you've got. So as you work each, you know, each couple of inches, just kind of push the work down and twist it a little bit. And that's going to give you that nice tight spiral um, look that I was going after when I did this bracelet here. So you're going to continue until you get to the end or the length of the bracelet that you need. Now know that you are going to need about an inch here to actually add the button loop part of your clasp. So your beadwork doesn't actually need to be the length of the bracelet that you need because you still have your button and your button loop that you have to do. So continue to stitch and push the spiral down to keep that nice tight look on it. All right, so I have, as far as bead beading done, I have about five and a half inches of beadwork finished and I've ran out of thread. So there, you have a couple of options when you run out of thread. Option one is you can tie these two threads together. Now, when you tie them together, you can put the two threads together like this, my new thread and my old thread, and I can bring, come down and I can make a knot with those two threads just like this. Now, if I try to take it and I pull the threads tightly, this knot is going to move. So, what you'll want to do is then take these two little short tail pieces and you would want to tie these together and pull this tight. And that would stop your little piece from moving. Now, I've got a new knot that I want to try. I've seen it. It's called the magic knot. And I said, well, hey, let's give it a whirl. So, to do the magic knot, I'm basically going to take my new piece of thread. And I'm going to start a little knot on the new piece of thread. 
and I'm going to thread it onto my old thread. Okay, so again, new thread, little knot, thread it through my old thread, and I'm going to just pull that old thread tight for now. Now I'm gonna take, or tie that new thread. Now my old thread, I'm going to take and I'm gonna bring it around this new thread. Okay, so here's the, the old thread. I'm just gonna bring it kind of around so that the thread holds, stays in this little circle, and I'm gonna make a little knot here. All right. So now, when I pull this tight, look at that, it stays, yay. Okay. So we can start beading again. We don't cut off these tail threads. We want to just leave these little tail threads and stitch them in. So give me just a second and I'll show you how we're gonna do it. All right, so you can see here, I've started stitching with my beads and you can see now that my two tail threads are here inside of my beads. So I'm not pulling them out, I'm leaving them in. So that way, if anything was to happen, my bracelet wouldn't fall apart. It would have to go through all of this length of tail to kind of come apart. So you just stitch it in just like this. Now, if there's a little piece of tail sticking out anywhere here, you can take and you can trim that little bit off. But otherwise, um, make sure to stitch these tails in as you work. All right, so I have the length of the bracelet that I want, and I'm here at the very end. I have added that last C that I'm going to add for the row, and now I just have to finish out my piece. So I'm going to pick up two 11s, and I'm going to come through the two 11s after the 8. So I'm going to skip the A and go through two 11s. Then I'm going to pick up two 11s. I'm going to skip the B and go through the top two 11s. So not the lower one, but the top two here. So not the one right after, but the next two, kind of almost like a step up. Okay. So if I count my 11 so far that are sticking up, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I need to add two more. So one, two. And again, I'm going to skip the C. Now I'm not gonna go through the lower 11 over here after the C, but the next two. All right, so just like I did these over here, I don't go through that lower one, almost like a step up. So I'm gonna go through the next two. So that when I pull this tight, I now have that ring of 10 beads here along the top. And I'm gonna go through those 10 beads again, pulling them nice and tight as I go. And then at this point, I can tie my thread off. So it's completely up to you how you wanna do that. You can go under the thread between two of the beads here if you want to. Leave yourself a small loop of thread and then take your needle back through that loop to make a little half hitch knot if you want to. Um, everything is completely up to you and how you want to tie this off. Like I said, there's lots of ways that this stitch is done. So it's completely up to you. I'm just putting some half hitch knots here. Okay. And then I'm going to trim the thread here on the end. Now you'll notice I still have this little short tail thread here. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna, um, this is already, it's not tied, but it's together. So I'm gonna tie this thread off just like I did up top and stitch this thread in. All right, since I have my beadwork completely tied off, I'm gonna take my piece of painter's tape off here. And you can see it comes off really easy and it doesn't leave me any sort of sticky residue here. So I'm going to, just like last week where we didn't do it super tight up against the knot, 
I'm going to make the knot and not put it super tight up against the beadwork. If you put it super tight up against the beadwork, you're gonna scrunch it up even more and um, it may not fit. So you wanna make sure to not scrunch up the knot where you're at. I'm going to measure out my button. So I need about this much length for my button and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna make another knot. Now, before I tighten that button loop up here, or that knot up there, I'm going to put the button back in and then sort of pull the knot down where it needs to be. And that's good there. And I just pull those nice and tight. I'm gonna double check the button the button is going to fit perfectly. Now, just like last week, there's lots of ways you can finish off. You can go back to the Java bangles video, which is this one here, and see how I made these little tiny beaded beads that you can put on with it as well. Um, you can do little knots on the end, or you can just trim it all the way up here and put you a dab of glue on the end. Whatever you choose to do is completely up to you. Um, I think I'm just going to put a little double knot in here. It makes a cool looking knot when you do a little double knot like that. So I'm going to pull that tight. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. It's completely up to you. That's the great thing about using the leather and how you finish it off. Each person kind of has their own fun thing that they do and that's the great part about it. Now, I'm going to take a pair of scissors. These are not the scissors I cut my threads with. Always make sure of that. And just trim the little ends so that now you have your little ends finished and your bracelet is complete. So the great thing about these bracelets, they're really nice and stackable. They go great with the Java bangles. Um, you can also make multiples, multiples of them and wear them together. So it's a lot of fun. And like I said, you can also make a necklace out of it instead of a bracelet. Now, here's the one thing I will tell you about this specific stitch. It is not forgiving. So, if you push it down like I've done to really get that nice twist and you make a mistake, you are going to see the mistake. And a lot of times, you're way further than before you realized it. So, I'm going to twist it here. And you'll see that right here, I don't know what happened, but something happened right here. And I have these two beads that are setting the opposite way. Now, I know some of you, that would bug the patooties out of you, and you would go back and you would fix this. I was already up to here before I realized it, and I said, well, this is going to be mine. I really don't care. So, always know to pay attention because if you make a boo-boo, you will see it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make this Russian spiral bracelet today. There are lots of different options out there as to how to make these bracelets because this is an old stitch and it has been done a million ways. You can use almost any shape and size of bead to make these bracelets with. So there are lots and lots of options out there. Now I do have the pattern for sale on my website off the beaded path beadstore.com that's going to walk you through step by step on how to do the three colors that I showed you today. It's also going to show if you want to make a solid color like I did here on this blue and kind of gold mustardy colored. Um, I do have all three of those color samples that you've seen today. The red, white, and blue, the um, turquoise green and cream like I did, and this blue. All of those are kits on my website uh, while supplies last at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. Now, I know I get some questions. The earrings I have in today are actually earrings that are going to be coming up on a video in just a couple of weeks. So guys, I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.